it's sometimes hard to see that. You know, I explain it from when I was laying there on the battlefield. Um, in the end, I didn't think about all the things I had or the success or my rank or anything of where I was. All I thought about was, you know, my wife and kids and how, man, I wish I would have had just a couple more minutes with them before I thought I was checking out. Trusted and proven, pushing the limits on every shot. We never fear failure. Join us as we set ourselves against the odds, bringing you cutting edge voices in every industry. This is the Ironclad Podcast. All right, what's up, everybody? Today, we had the privilege of speaking to a longtime Ironclad friend, Jason Redman. If you guys don't know who Jason Redman is, well, you're missing out. Jason's a retired Navy SEAL, Purple Heart recipient, author, and all-around great guy. We got some incredible insights from him today, and you're not going to want to miss this episode. One of the biggest things I got from you was really uh, understanding. I think leadership kind of always came natural to me. But I never really learned how to hone it in. And, and after talking to you and uh, when we, fir- we first met, what was it, 12, 2012 maybe? Yeah, and, yeah uh, that sounds right. Yeah, Just some of the things you were talking about in your book and, and just your story, I really learned the importance of self-improvement and, and, and figuring those things out and learning from other people. So you've, you've made a big impact on me and ultimately the Ironclad team. Awesome. That stuff. Well, thank you. Yeah, man. It's been cool to watch. You look good too. I'm, I'm hitting tight. it, man. Yeah. I'm hitting it. Yeah. So I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, I, t- I teach, I follow, I practice what I preach. Yeah. So I teach something called the Pentagon of Peak Performance. It's the, uh, really, it's the basis of my new book, Overcome, is broken into four parts. The first part's all about the life ambushes that everybody encounters. Uh, congratulations, America. You've been hit by a global life ambush. Uh, everybody's on the X. So how do we figure out how to get off the X, the X being the point of any attack incident, uh, you know, crisis in your life. Uh, the second part of the book is after you can get out of an ambush. Now, how do you balance yourself and prepare yourself to be proactive for future crisis and ambushes and things that are coming? So I teach something called the Pentagon of Peak Performance. So five key areas that you have to lead yourself to be balanced and to be ready to be the most effective, high performing version of yourself. And those five areas are physical leadership. So uh, sleep, fitness, nutrition. They are mental leadership. So educating yourself, constantly learning, reading, uh, finding good mentors, seeking knowledge, Emotional leadership, so how do we manage our emotions? What, what are you putting in? Uh, positivity in the face of negativity, uh, managing those relationships, managing your mouth. Um, you know, that's a big one. I watch a lot of people damage relationships, and even I'm guilty sometimes. I've done it where you get tired and you let that, you let that firebomb slip out that you're just like, that, and that's weak emotional leadership. That's all that is. Uh, it's a moment of weakness. Social leadership, how do we build our ring of uh, influence and invest in our teams? And then spiritual leadership, how do you get outside of yourself? So, uh, yeah, man, I'm just, uh, I I follow those things. I make sure I try and apply time into them. If not every day, at least every week, I'm putting some time into those things. And I try to start every day with, uh, you know, the last part of my morning routine is that workout. What is it that that drives you for that? You know, you came out and you kind of were... We, we, after your injury, you were kind of forced to kind of tap in, right, and 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 get through adversity. What is it drives you now that that continue to evolve, evolve your message, evolve yourself, <clears throat> mind, body, soul, everything that you talk about? I want to be the best version of myself. So some of it is um, some of it is selfish. I mean, I'll be perfectly honest. I feel better when I take care of myself, and I, and I'll be honest, my body aches. Uh, I am. You know, I think people see me and I, I joke often when I speak that, you know, what you see looks like a Ferrari, but dude, this Ferrari has been wrecked multiple times. Like the engine's been blown. Uh, there's a lot of Bondo, yeah. <laughs> multiple paint jobs. And um, I wrote the foreword for a friend's book and his book is about morning routines. And I wrote about the fact that, um, I don't know. I watch some of these high performance people out there who talk about, man, I get out of bed every morning and like my clothes are on and I've already done half my workout before I even pull the covers off. And I've already done six of my tasks before I make it into the bathroom. I wake up and I'm on fire every day and you should be the same. And I'm like, you're a liar. You're a liar. Uh, nobody is that way all the time. And I'll tell you what, man, I wake up and I hurt. 
I wake up, it's hard for me to get up and get going, to get this broken up old, old wreck to start moving and functioning. Um, but I do it. That's the difference. And that's what I tell people out there. And, that, and the reason I wrote it that way is I'm like, hey, man, if, if a busted up, I, you know, on paper, I'm a fairly successful guy. You know, people would look at that. And the bottom line is if I can be successful and I get up and I still, you know, maybe I don't rip the covers off and I'm like, I'm so ready to go. But when it's time to get up, I get up and I execute. I get up and I start doing those things. I start going through my processes. And I think that's what people need to know is, uh, is success is not achieved. Um, you don't have to be perfect all the time. No one is. And if anybody's presenting themselves that way, they're a liar. They're wrong. You know, if, if they allowed you to follow them around for 24 hours a day, seven days a week for 30 days, you're going to start to see the chinks in the armor. That is humanity. I mean, we're all human. Yeah. And, uh, and I think there's more power in that seeing the humanity in people and knowing, Hey, Jason Redmond has down days or, or, you know, Jocko, David Goggins, or even, you know, Tony Robbins, any of these super high people, they have down days, but guess what? They execute. And that's what drives me, man. I just, I know that as long as I keep grinding, trying to be the best version of myself, know that some days I'm going to mess it up and get off course, but I pull that compass back out and I go, okay. Yesterday we got a little off course, so let's course correct and get back on course. That's good, man. Are you auditing your day? Is that how you do it? Or how do, how do you keep track and how do you keep accountability on those things? Yeah, so I have a uh, journal. It's a journal I actually developed called the JR Overcome Journal. I basically took all the different key things I've used, and I've used a lot of different journals over the years. So I built my own. If you sign up for my online course, the 72 hours to peak performance, or if you sign up for my Overcome Army group, that course comes with it. Uh, the journal is actually downloadable in, I think, less than three or four. And, uh, and it has those things in it. It, yeah. it has basically my morning routine, um, something I call, you know, I, I talk about something called moving the needle, that every day you should move the needle in your life. And, and if you want to be efficient and feel good about yourself at the end of the day and and, and maybe you're a little lost. Maybe you're in a storm. Maybe you don't know what direction you need to go. Uh, if you do this every day, I guarantee you will move the needle in your life and you will be more successful than 90% of the people out there because 90% of people will never do this. But I call it the rule of three P's. Get up in the morning, have your coffee, wake up, and then on a piece of paper, write down the three P's. These are three goals you're going to get done in the day. One is physical. Right, any physical goal. This morning I wrote down, I'm going to do a chest and try workout. That was my physical goal. Write down one personal. What's something personally you are going to get done today? Uh, you know, it could be do your taxes. It could be clean the closet. It could be wash your car. It could be, uh, I'm going to have dinner with my wife tonight. And then the third one is professional. What are you doing professionally that makes you better? Whether it's in your career, maybe you're a student, maybe it's studying a little more for that test. If you knock out those three things, you're going to go to bed at night and look in that mirror and be like, dude, that, I moved the needle. I feel good. Um, so there's that. There's the Pentagon of Peak Performance. Uh, there is gratitude. I write down what is one thing I'm grateful for uh, every day. I write down. So one is a, a, a thing I'm grateful for, and the other one is a person I'm grateful for. And then, uh, and then on the other side is my schedule. I write out, hey, these are the big muscle movement things that have to be done. And then I fill in the white space in between with, uh, you know, other tasks and things that I need to get done. And uh, the one other thing that's on there, I call it the one thing or the move, ne move the needle. Uh, what is the big thing that needs to get done that's going to move the needle to make, you know, money or take care yeah. of people, one or the other? Do you feel, I know sometimes, because I'm pretty strict with my routine and Sometimes I feel like I'm just checking box, checking and I, I lose my presence. I'm not like embracing the pain that I'm doing in a workout or embracing a meeting that I'm having because I'm wait, I'm just going to click that one and go to the next one. I'm tracking online, right? You're not How engaged. do you, what, what are you doing to, yeah, what are you doing to kind of keep auditing that and continuing to uh, evolve and develop efficiently? Because even you, right, your, your lessons have changed, your, your, your own um, teachings have evolved. How are you continuing to do that without getting stuck in this kind of, rat race of hitting these milestones? Um, sometimes it's okay to hit the milestones. I think it's normal. I used to believe that, uh, every, um, that every workout that I did had to be this bone crushing workout. Right. Like I just, I had to, if I was not like, 
you know, in the red for that workout, then it wasn't a good workout. And I'm beginning to realize that that's not necessarily true. There's an ebb and flow to that. I mean, with everything, I'm studying a lot more about working out in the body. Um, you know, I have a, a, fit, a high-end fitness tracker that I watch a lot of these things. But I think life's at, uh, like that also. Now, engagement, I do agree that uh, how can we be more engaged? Because I'm, I am, uh, I used to think I was good at multitasking, but I'm not. I'm good at planning a lot of things out and executing them sometimes in a very reduced period of time. Right. So what I've come to figure it out is I can be incredibly productive in a very short period of time when I need to be. And, uh, and that's a really good skill to have uh, if you want to be successful. Um, let's just hypothetically say you got to read a six page paper. Um, I am a, the type of individual that if I lock down and block off, Maybe it's only two hours. Maybe somebody else, it takes them five days to write a six-page paper. I can crank out a six-page paper in maybe 30 minutes if I had to. Um, so I'm good at that. What I've come to learn is uh, if I'm trying to multitask, I am not engaged. Yeah. Uh, my mind is drifting. I'm already thinking of the next thing or I'm thinking about something else that I'm trying to do. So that's something I try and catch myself and say, hey, you need to be engaged in this. Put your phone down. You know, Put your computer down. And, and focus on this task or this individual at hand. Um, and that's something I'm trying to do a little more. So that falls into all three different areas in my Pentagon. Yeah. That's both mental, emotional, and, and social. Yeah, that's good. I, I think that's a, like I said, I think that's kind of uh, a trait in a lot of guys that are naturally hard chargers to really kind of slow down and be present in those things. Another thing that I always been motivated by is, people I'm around. Right. And, and you were a big proponent of this out of the gate. I remember even I was talking to Noah beforehand because these guys weren't here. We were watching some old jumping for a purpose videos to this day. Some of my favorite videos, you always kind of just threw us in and, and we elevated according to the people that you surrounded yourself with. And even like in planes, they strapped Noah up to a plane. We were, they were flying over uh, from Pungo to the beach and it was Noah would have had to fly back to Pongo to drive back to the beach to film. And one of the dudes in the plane, he's like, team guy, he's like, I'll just strap you on up here and we'll just jump out together. And Noah's like getting strapped up like, ah, yeah, he, he, I, I guess I can do this. But it's just one of those things where the mindset, he had to tap into that mindset and, and the value of mentorship and the people you surround yourself with. It's big. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and what it's like seeking that and, and why you need to seek that? Yeah, I mean, I think it comes back to, uh, uh, well, first off, Noah, are you, have you jumped anymore? No, not yet. Not that yet? Was, that okay. was your only jump, right? Yeah. He's never even, dude, we would be in those planes, like, holding on. It was a blast, man. Yeah. No, it was an amazing event. And, and, you know, the USO took it over. Really? Yeah. So I still go. Uh, it's part of Patriotic Festival now. So, it was the first patriotic festival that that was when he jumped because yeah, that was like no, that was I 18. That. I think that was 18. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it was packed 17 or 18. Yeah, because we phased the organization down the end of 18. Uh, and then uh, the USO liked it so much because I had gotten them involved in it. Yeah, I think in the last couple of years when we were doing it. So uh, they decided to take it over, which was awesome. Man, powerful event. Yeah. Changed my life. Literally yeah. just seeing. I still have never event. jumped into my own event. So, really? Uh, yeah, I still have not done it. So I was planning on it this year. Yeah. I was going to, I had actually taken my rig out and got it uh, all uh, repacked and yeah, certified. Yeah. And I was going to start jumping again. Of course, everything's been shut down. But yeah. All right. Have you jumped in a while? It's been about a year and a half. Um, I'll be honest, I've developed a, uh, uh, I don't know. I had this weird dream that I burned in on a malfunction Yeah. and now it's this, I don't know. So I almost am thinking about like, I want to get some of the guys and do a, uh, and do, uh, for like you can, like, I want to jump with certified AFF, yeah. like really good sky guides, but you can do it where, so basically I'd like to make myself have a malfunction, Yeah. except I have a third parachute, you know, they right. do this and, uh, in um, parachute test yeah, yeah. training. So you normally have your main and your reserve, and then they wear a belly reserve if they have a really bad. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I've thought about that because I'm kind of the mindset that if I have a fear, I need to confront it. Yeah. 
So I, I want to get out and just, I, I'm, I don't know. It's just this weird dream and I haven't been able to shake it. Was it Emerson who said like, do the thing you fear and the death of fear is certain. Yeah. It's a, uh, you, you got the and tunnel, I believe in it you, too. you got the tunnel across the street. You it's can, not, it's not a flying problem. Yeah. That, that's yeah, nothing. It's, just it's that, a, just uh, it's actually an injury problem. It's, yeah. uh, the, the, the dream, I couldn't use my left arm, my damaged arm, uh, and, and it caused me to not be able to yeah. recover. And that That's it's bothered me yeah. ever since then. So I'm. It's like, so crazy because you were the guy that was putting everybody just in there, man. You yeah, were just going for it. Yeah. So uh, so uh, yeah. that that so. Anyways, I yeah. said this summer I got to get out and do it. And, That's cool. And get back to uh, get back so I can jump in. Yeah, man. Fun times and and like I said, just just hearing those stories of everybody and and you giving a microphone to people, um, and warriors with just the mindset to just crush it. Yeah. It changed it changed all of our lives. It really did. It 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 really revolutionized how we even approach things at Ironclad. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Now man, we worked together right from the very beginning. So yeah. it was uh it was really neat. Um I I, I love seeing your guys' stuff out there. So Appreciate it, I uh I haven't had a big enough project yet. I do have some ideas where I'd like to bring you guys back on. Uh, and this was kind of the year we were going to do it. We were yeah. crushing it. And yeah. I had some really good. And then, of course, you know, everything we'll get, we'll get the team back together. Yeah, this yeah, it'll be good. Deal, but yeah, always fun. And, you know, another cool thing that I always admire about you, you came up with creative ideas. A lot of people have trouble doing that. That's uh, a strength of mine. Yeah. As a, a, and, you know, when you identify, everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. I mean, I've. Uh, plenty of weaknesses. One of my big strengths is uh, creativity. I mean, I just, I'm, and it has been something that's always served me well um, in in both business and even in, in the military. Yeah, I think uh, on the creative side, c- talking to a lot of people from our industry, um, sometimes creativity gets in our way of high achievement, like, right? because we're always all, you know, we just we fall in love with ideas. We fall in love to the point where we can't execute or we can't collaborate enough to optimize on a great opportunity. So finding that balance is huge. Yeah. It's been, it's been cool to watch, but you um, gotta be careful of the good idea fairy. Yeah. Yeah. You do. You do. Especially when you've got a full building of them Yeah, and everyone's everyone falling in love with their idea. So that happens all the time. All right. So after the break, you're not going to want to miss this rapid fire segment up next. All right. Action. So we'll do our wide and we'll do our close up here. Team 101A, take three. You guys, is this my trailer? Let's do one of these and then we're good. All right, you ready? Oh, that's dormant plastic. That sun comes out for real right there. That's worth the fight. Three, two, one. One of the quotes in your book is leadership is a journey that never ends. There is no finish line in the race to be a good leader. Can you talk a little bit about that and what that means? Yeah, I think it's summarized in a lot of different ways. I mean, I would, I would say one, I think sometimes I've had companies bring me in and they'll say, you know, he's a, you know, retired Navy SEAL and a leadership expert. And I would never, ever, ever describe myself that way. I would describe myself as a, a student of leadership, uh, and, and the reason being just because leadership is forever evolving. And even as the individual, it's always evolving. Once, it, just because you've had all these unique experiences in leadership doesn't mean that things you've used in the past are definitively going to work in this scenario. Uh, every scenario may take different nuances of leadership. And, uh, and I think good leaders recognize that. And they recognize that they may try something and, you know, maybe if you're, Younger in your leadership, you may just do the same thing. Oh, well, let me keep trying this and hopefully get a different outcome. But uh, so that's one thing. And then I think the other thing is uh, a good friend of mine and, and business leader, coach, uh, Bedros Koulian wrote that, you know, never peak. So we should always be aspiring to be better. And I think I naturally feel that way. Um, I don't think I'm quite as competitive I, as I was when I was younger. So in some ways I am... I'm not so competitive that I want to, like, I I know some guys out there in business, like they're fueled by, they'll sit here. We wouldn't be having a conversation and someone else, they'd be sitting here looking at me and all they'd be thinking about is I can't wait to beat you, dude. Like I want to make more money than you. Like that's my driving force. Like, 
And uh, I don't know, man. I don't tick that way anymore. Like, I want you to be successful, and I want to be successful. Right. But my success is based off continuing to move the needle in my life every day in all areas so my family's still good. And I come home to a, a, a beautiful house that I'm content with, but I'm not cash broke on. Right. And, um, and for me, it's, it's moving the needle and doing things with my family. Um, it's, it's trying to build more relationship with my friends and trying to figure out how to help more people. So that, that's my never peaking in all direction. And that, and that calls for constantly learning and leadership because it's, uh, it's always changing. The world is changing. You're changing. You're growing. The people you're leading and working with are changing and growing. Your kids, your family are changing and growing. So, uh, so that's why I believe it'll never end unless, unless you get short sighted and think that you know everything, which usually is, is a, uh, uh, it is a, uh, a death call. Pride comes before the fall. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I've definitely, arrogance has taken me down. Before. Yeah. And you've written about that and it's, uh, I think that's impacted a ton of people. I think, um, you know, we were just talking before this and you were talking about what success meant to you, but a lot of people have, they've never really defined what success means to them. So they're chasing maybe some of the effects of success. And if they define that as success, everything else falls to the wayside. Families, businesses, relationships, whatever that may be. Success in one aspect, when they get so narrow, they, they leave everything else out. So that's a hard lesson I think a lot of people learn. Yeah, and usually it's too late when you, uh, when you finally figure it out. Usually everything is kind of broken yeah. and you're alone trying to deal with that life ambush has finally settled in. You know, you've been attacked in some area. And uh, the, this is something that I speak on, and it's I talk about it with social leadership, that um, you've got to take time to invest in, I, I describe it as four different rings. So uh, the outer ring is your business relationships. Uh, the inner ring is kind of your acquaintances and more of your close business friends, partners. Uh, that next inner ring is close friends. Uh, and then that, that centermost ring is your family. Uh, and oftentimes, especially here in America, we have a tendency to put a lot more focus on those outer rings than our inner rings. And we just kind of take those inner rings for granted. Yet I watch so many people that, uh, encounter some kind of life ambush, some kind of life crisis. And, um, and those rings go away. What I, what I describe it as is we all ride along on trains. And if something happens that you get thrown off the train, some sort of major crisis, you know, you guys are riding along on the ironclad train, um, you know, the, the video production train. And I rode along on the SEAL train, and then now I'm riding along on the leadership, uh, resiliency speaking coaching train. So if, if something was to happen, we get thrown off the train. Well, everybody else keeps riding on that train. You know, they don't just get off because you got off, you know, your crisis, although they may feel bad for you that something happened to you and they may stop by a few times, their life keeps going. And, uh, it's sometimes hard to see that, you know, I explain it from when I was laying there on the battlefield. Um, in the end, I didn't think about all the things I had or the success or my rank or anything of where I was. All I thought about was, you know, my wife and kids and how, man, I wish I would have had just a couple more minutes with them before I thought I was checking out. So I talk to people a lot about that, that uh, have perspective and, and invest in, in all these rings because it's in the hardest times of your life that those innermost rings are going to be there for you. And they're the rings that you want at the end. Uh, all this other stuff we do is awesome, but, uh, you know, those things don't matter in the end. You're not going to care about them. I'd never, not once did I, not once when I was laying there dying, did I think about, uh, a vehicle or a motorcycle or how much money was in my bank account or if my house missed me or any of that stuff, man, you just think about the, the people who are important to you. So that's powerful, man. I think, um, this is a micro version of that. What's happening now to a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, it's a forced evolution. It's kind of that it's kind of everybody going through it together though. What do you want people to take out of what's happening right now? 
take the small things for granted. Two, two things. One, take the small things for granted. People are looking at, uh, it's funny, I, every week I do something called Monday Muster. It's a uh, motivational thing on how we start the week in mindset. And we're here in, here in Virginia, um, well, at least for us, we, my family and I started the quarantine, I think, uh, the day that the president asked right. people to stand. So it's been 35 days for us. And, uh, and my family and I are very close. We get along great. My wife and I are great. We run our business together. So that friction really isn't there with us. But I see it with a lot of other people. A lot of people have been on top of each other. Kids are home, homeschooled. So that friction is bubbling up. And I'm listening to it. I mean, you just watch it in the news. You see people that are out there protesting, you know, how you're taking our freedoms and all this. And um, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Uh, I think the, the government is trying to do their best they can. But the bottom line is this. It comes down to um, perspective and and recognizing that this life is going to end for all of us. Our days are numbered. Uh, I firmly believe that. I believe that, that, that when it's your time to die, you're going to die. Um, you know, whether it happens in combat, whether it happens driving down the street, I firmly believe that whatever that final moment is, it's already been charted. And uh, not that you should go out and stand in front of, uh, you know, cars and traffic trying to tempt uh, your final day. But the bottom line in all of this is that everybody dies. I mean, it's a one guaranteed fact in this life. And yet there are so many people that are so stressed out and losing their minds right now with this global pandemic, with the loss of business. And I mean, we lost 90% of our revenue. Uh, but, you know, hey, in the grand scheme of things, I'm still alive. I still got my family. Uh, we're figuring it out. Nobody's shooting at me and nobody's dying. And that's what I'm trying to convey to people. Uh, there are little blessings in this. Focus on those small things. So that's one. Focus on the little things, the positive things. Stop focusing on the negative things. And number two is every storm ends. I don't care what it is. Throughout history, nothing has lasted forever. So have hope and look to the future. Look for, once again, look for the positive. And, uh, and if you have that positive mindset, you're going to come out of the storm and not just have withered and survived when finally you make it out into the sunshine again, looking like Gollum, you know, instead you'll come back out and you'll be ready to go, man. You'll have this great mindset and you endured instead of so many of the people that are just focused on the negative and they're letting that negative energy within their home and within the news and everywhere else pull them down. It's huge. It's awesome, man. Great stuff. All right, coming up after the break, Jason's going to talk a little bit about what he knows better than anyone, overcoming adversity. You don't want to miss it. Power is literally everything to us. When you're professional traveling as much as we do, we can't sacrifice on power to get the perfect shot. The last thing you want to be worried about is your battery. We're very selective with the brands that we trust. Not sure if we're going to have charging station, but we have an entire drawer full of core batteries. Knowing that we have power that we can trust, we're out here on the road, it makes all the difference. Power is something that's easy to take for granted until it fails. You risk losing your data, you risk losing the stuff that you just worked so hard on. Without proper power, our equipment, no matter how great the technology, are paperweights. Just wrapped our shoot in the Philippines. Tested in the elements, the heat, the wind, the rain. Usually when it's really cold, power gets zapped like that. It's freezing out here, and this power's been holding all day. We rely on powering products that are designed to meet our rigorous demands. So we never miss a moment. So we have the primes, we have the minis, different power solutions for different power needs. They last forever. We got a visibility on how long we have on them. Intelligent power and air travel certified. To charge our phones and charge our devices. There are some cool things Core has in the works. Stay tuned for the Helix. As the technology of our trade gets more complex, we're confident that the power we use will not only match it, but help bring it into the future. The story doesn't stop for anyone, and that is why we choose CORE.
So we're just this is kind of a speed round when we go through here. Okay, so we ask a couple questions, key takeaway points for everybody here. So um, these are just some some questions that were kind of standard that we ask for everybody. And one, the first one is, what's the best advice you've ever received? People will follow you if you give them a reason to. It's great. Um, two, um, if you could go back twenty years and tell yourself something, what would it be? Uh, hire people and seek out mentors as quickly as possible when you want to try something new. Stop being a knucklehead and trying to figure it out for yourself. You're wasting time and money. I like that one. <laughs> I, I could I could use that one all the time too. Um, you know what's funny is every time I think like I'm never going to do that again, the the opportunity presents itself like, oh, I can figure this out or it's cheaper this way. Yeah, yeah. And then it comes back to get you. Or, or we just think we can do it ourselves, yeah. that we're saving time and money by doing it ourselves. Yeah. Right. And, and this is really hard on things that you like doing. I like editing. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. like doing video editing. It's just something I like to do. But it, you guys know it is incredibly time consuming. Um, so um, I have recently uh, had to stop. I'm just like you're wasting too much time editing your own videos, even Save though you like Christmas it. videos. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah. even though I like doing it, it's just a, my time should be spent on, and for any leader out there, that's what they need to look at. What, what is the biggest impact thing you can do that you are the only one that can do it? Um, I'm the only one that can create content uh, based off what I'm doing. Now, I can bring people in and I can give them advice on which direction to go, but that takes time to give them that advice and develop them. So really, as a leader, that's what you should be looking at. If you want to move to the next level, how do you scale yourself? And, and then how do you whittle things down where the only thing you are focused on are the things that you truly are the only one that you have the ability to do. And that's hard. In my business, uh, we were getting there this year where I could hire all the people I needed to do that. Um, you know, things have slowed down a little bit yeah. now. So there's that balance. And that's something that I'm trying to get better at is uh, finding good people and, and teaching them and delegating them how to do those things, even though you may like to do them. Yeah, I understand. Totally understand that one. So uh, what would you tell a young listener who wants to change the world but doesn't know how? Just action trumps inaction, man. Get off the X. Just go out there. And, and if you're trying to make a positive difference, you don't need the perfect plan, man. A good plan executed is better than spending all the time in the world trying to figure it out. Yeah. So. Patton. Yeah. Yeah. Truth. Yeah. Man. Truth. And so many people waste so much time. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, what's the one thing uh, in every person should do every single day? I'm going to cheat here. Yeah. They, they got to do the rule of three P's. So, you know, identify yeah. one, one physical, one personal, one professional. You do that every day. And I guarantee you will be more successful than 90% of the people that walk this planet. That's great. So here's one from your uh, past life. What is one thing that elite seals and high performers understand more than most people? It's not the body. It's the mind. That's a good one. Uh, okay. So other than your own course, uh, w which was amazing, uh, which is amazing. What is the one book you think everyone should read? I like reading. So there's a lot of books that I really like. Um, I, I, so, um, I'm a man of faith and, uh, so I could just say the Bible, but I'll tell you, I sometimes struggle with the Bible. Yeah. Um, so I read a book recently, uh, I'm a very analytical person, right. like I, I, faith is a hard thing for me because I want facts. And, uh, there's a book called the case for a creator by Lee Strobel yep. that, uh, basically breaks down by scientists, a lot of, uh, facts that are leading themselves and are starting to disprove some of these scientific Th things that were considered scientific fact 50 years ago are now being disproven by new science that are leading themselves back to this idea that the only way that they could be where they are is by intelligent design, uh, which is a pretty mind blowing thing. When you go through and read that book, uh, I know for me, it really solidified some of my beliefs. Uh, so I, I would say that's probably I've actually read that book three times. Wow. So that's how powerful it is. Um, and I go back and read it. I'm going to add that one to my list. Yeah. If you're going to read the Bible, what, what book in the Bible? Probably anything in the first part of the New Testament. I mean, the life of Jesus and, yeah. and 
because one of the greatest things about Jesus is there is historical documentation. There's, Christianity is really fundamentally almost the only religion in the world that the the historical facts around that and the, and when when you talk about history, how do historians say this is a valid occurrence? Well, it's the amount of time that occurred between an event that makes it legitimate and the amount of sources they have to basically validate what these people said. And uh, between the Bible and other texts that they have found, Roman historical documents, you know, there is no doubt that Jesus and many of the things he said were, were validated. Um, some of the other religions, there's uh, as much as 400 years in between Muhammad, for instance, there's as many as 400 years in between recordings of what he said and somebody actually writing them down. So um, I would definitely say anything in the, uh, the first five books of the New Testament. Yeah, good stuff. All right, now this one's always my favorite one. So if you could issue, and this you can be as biased as you want in this one. If you, if you could issue a one-week challenge to listeners um, that would dramatically change their life, what would, you, what would you challenge them with to enact now? Get up 30 minutes earlier and do the rule of three Ps. You'll move the needle in your life. You know, one thing, just get up 30 minutes earlier, write down one thing physical, one thing personal, and one thing professional, and do it. You know, and it doesn't have to be rocket science. It's not like I got to go get my PhD today. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm going to read for 20 minutes. I'm going to do a 20 minute workout and I'm going to, you know, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to budget my money. Yeah. Watch so, what happens when you're with your life. Yeah. I, I heard, uh, one of the, one of the, someone I was listening to, he said, uh, you go into Walmart without a, without a list. It's like, have you ever been in Walmart without a list? You're like walking all around. You 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 come out with all this crap. Yeah. It's like, if you can't even go to a store without a list. Why wouldn't you write these things down in your own life? You know, people just wandering through and let life happen. No course. It's crazy. Awesome. So that was that was the fun round. This is this last one we call Sound Off. So this is about things that you feel um, strongly about. And we want to kind of give it give you a specialty to talk about. And yours, we want to talk about um, overcoming adversity, right? And this is one thing that you talk about a lot. Um and um, can you talk about, and you've kind of nailed this throughout this whole piece, and you've given us a lot of things, but you can be as, as broad or specific as you want. Can you kind of give us um, the biggest takeaways on how to overcome adversity, what the key strategies are, how you can apply it in your life, and why it's important? Yeah. So here's the deal. Everybody in life is going to, enc- being human's hard, man. The struggle is real. And life is not fair. You need to wrap your head around that. You can do everything right. You could come up with the greatest plan in the history of plans. You could build the greatest team in the history of teams and have the greatest leaders in the world, all the funding in the world. And you could book, you could bank everything on your life on this plan, all your investments and everything. And every expert around the world would say, this is going to be the most successful plan. And it will fail because life doesn't always, you know, strange things happen Global pandemics hit us that nobody could predict. And uh, there's so many people out there that hit these moments, these life or not fair moments, and it crushes them. It crushes them. They lay down on the X and they feel sorry for themselves. And all they want to do is look at the past and say, I spent all this time and money and, and this didn't work. So what? Guess what? It didn't work. Life's not fair. Get up, move. The greatest gift you have in these moments, when life ambushes come along, when bad things happen, and, and guess what? Bad things happen to good people. I hate to tell you. That's the other thing I hear out there. You know, well, they were such a good person. Yeah, bad things happen to good people. I'm sorry. Get up. Move. And, uh, and the greatest gift you have is you have a choice. That is the most powerful thing you have. You have a choice in the face of any bad thing that happens to you. You can either choose to be a victim and lay there and feel sorry for yourself and say, life's not fair. This global pandemic's not fair. I'm going to go out of business. Um, You know, this bad thing happened to me. Or you can say, this sucks. It's not fun. But guess what? I'm going to drive forward. Somewhere out there, there is light. Somewhere out there, sun still shines beyond this storm, and I'm going to go find it. I don't know what the outcome looks like. I know this is painful right now, but for every 
moment that that occurs where so many of us think it's the end, the reality is the people who are willing to get up and drive forward, it becomes a new beginning. And virtually almost 99% of the time, the people that get up out of that the end moment and get up and drive forward, several years down the road, they'll look back at that painful, miserable, the end moment, and they'll go, one of the best things that ever happened to me because it made me better. It built me. It built the overcome mindset. It made me more, more resilient. It made me a better leader. It made me more empathetic that guess what? Bad things happen to good people and they're better and they got a whole new course that probably never would have happened if that negative, terrible event had not happened to them. Awesome. You crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, man. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate you coming in. We kept our six feet here and, uh, it's been it's been a pleasure, man. It's been too long. Yeah, it has, man. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm glad you guys reached out. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so no, I appreciate it. And well, it's good. So. Stay safe, and and we'll talk soon. Yeah, man. Everybody. Uh, yeah, everybody. You got a choice. Yeah. Choose wisely. Awesome. Thanks again to our guest, Jason Redman. You can follow him on Twitter at Jason Redman WW and check out his latest book, Overcome: Crush Adversity with Leadership Techniques of America's Toughest Warriors. Thanks for listening to the Ironclad Podcast. Remember, you can stay up to date on everything happening on the Ironclad Content Network over on thisisironclad.com and by following us on Instagram at thisisironclad.